Hey there, Carl Smith from Photoshop Cafe. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to create a realistic beam of light, kind of like a spotlight. So what we're going to do is we're going to create this shaft of light that's going to go through the air and then we're going to illuminate a subject. So you can even use it in your painting work if you like. And just to let you know, I also have this as a step-by-step -step written tutorial on photoshopcafe.com and I'll give you the link for that as well. So let's get started. So here we've got a picture of Lana that I took of her playing the guitar. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some lighting effects here. So we're going to put a spotlight effect in here. Um, typically, this works really well with a darker background. And in fact, we can kind of do some different things to fake that in a little bit. So uh, let's have a look at what we're going to do as far as um, just kind of creating this effect. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a lighting effect. So we're going to go into the curves and we're going to make everything darker kind of like nighttime so let's go down to the curves here and we're just going to create a new adjustment layer and we're going to grab a curves adjustment layer now the curves are going to pop up i'm just going to drag them out over here so we can see them nice and easily so what we're going to do is we're actually just going to go up to the top corner here which is the lighter parts and we're just going to bring this down and what that does is it just kind of lowers that ambient so it's looking a little bit darker and then we can actually go into the mids here and just drag those down a little bit more too, just to kind of add a little bit more contrast to that darkening. Uh, although typically if you look at it at nighttime, uh, the contrast is actually generally pretty low with the ambient light. But we're just going to bring that down. There we go. So we've got the darkness down a little bit. The other thing I'd like to do here is maybe give it a little bit of color um, because we're just going to give it more of a bluish tone to kind of simulate a moonlight, even though it's indoors, but it's just a nice effect. So what we're going to do, rather than take the blues and take those down, or increase the blues, should I say, sorry, we're going to take the reds, and we're actually just going to go in mainly in the highlights here, and we're just going to reduce the reds a little bit. And then we're going to do the same thing in the greens. And by reducing the reds and greens, notice it gives it a little bit of a blue hue. We might even pull it down a little in the mids there. And uh, notice I'm doing it more in the green because when I'm doing that, it's giving it still a little bit of a red feel there, um, which is kind of good because, you know, kind of a purpley look. And then we're going to go into blues, maybe boost those just a little bit just to kind of show that we've got some light. So what we've got there is we've got our ambient light. So this is kind of, you know, the dark room without any lighting on right now. So what we're going to do at this point here is we're going to add some light. So there's two things we're going to do is we're going to actually create where the light is hitting our subject. And then the other thing we're going to do is we're going to create a beam of light, which actually shows the light itself in the room. So first of all, why don't we just turn off this top layer? Let's go back to the bottom layer here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a quick selection. So I'm going to grab this quick select tool. And I'm just going to go make it a little bit larger here. And I'm just going to make a selection, a rough selection around here. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just want to get just something kind of rough. And maybe just grab her shirt there in the corner. And we're just being careful here. And so I'm not going to do a full cut out of this. All I'm trying to do is just get a little bit here because I want the light to kind of come down and hit this area here. And all I'm doing is I'm just kind of isolating her a little bit from the background. So we're just gonna to go to the refine edge, jump in here. Um, let's just give it a little bit of radius. And that's looking pretty good. And then what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna pop this out to a new layer with a layer mask and then click OK. So what we can do now is if we go up here and we turn our curves on, you can see everything is dark. But we're going to pop these up above her now. So we've put that layer up above the curves layer so we can see we've got that there or just that by itself. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to mask this area now. And we're just going to kind of let the light just hit it. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to soften the edge a little bit there. So I'm going to double click and I'm just going to turn on a feather a little bit. So we're just kind of feathering that mask a little bit. In fact, what I should have done is, in fact, let's just do that. Let's just go into the, um, the mask edge. And there's a better way of doing it here. I'm just going to give a little touch of feather. There we go. Just to kind of smoothen it down. Click OK. And we're good. So what we've done is we've just softened those edges nicely. So we've got a better transition in there. So what I'm going to do is now is I'm actually going to apply this mask onto here. So I'm just going to right click and I'm going to choose apply layer mask. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because I just want a layer here that I can mask out. 
because if I'd filled that mask up, we would lose the selection. The other option I could have done is just popped it into a group and put a mask on the group, but this will work fine. So what we've got here is just a layer now by itself that's showing a little bit of light. So what we're gonna do with this now is I'm just gonna create a mask and I'm gonna hold down the option key and that would be the Alt key on Mac and we're just gonna create a mask. And what that does is it creates a mask that's filled with black. So what it's done is it's hiding everything. So now we're gonna go in here and we're just gonna paint in the areas that I want the light to be hitting. So I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna grab my brush and I'm gonna choose a white brush. I'm gonna go up the top here. Notice my opacity is up pretty high, it's at 100%. Um, and I've got the pressure sensitivity turned on here. If you go into the brushes panel here, I'm gonna turn off the shape dynamics so that the size doesn't get affected. And I'm gonna go into transfer. And what I'm doing is I'm showing you the settings right now for Wacom. And I'll show you the settings in a second for a mouse. So I'm in here and I've got the opacity set to pan pressure here. So that means if I press really light, I can paint a little bit in there. And if I press really hard, it shows a lot. Now, let me just undo that. And that'll work really nicely for me. I don't want the size on, I just want the transparency and notice that we've got it on here too. And uh, we can turn that on or off there. But uh, once again, we're focusing on it here. All right, so now if you were using a mouse and you don't have the pressure sensitivity, I turn the opacity down to about 20 or 30% and then just slowly paint it up over time with multiple strokes. And you could kind of do that. And to be honest, I'm gonna be doing a little bit of it that way with my Wacom as well. But um, I just like to have that little extra control of the pressure sensitivity. So I realize that my light is gonna kind of hit this side here. And this is gonna be kind of like my spotlight area here. So I'm just gonna kind of just go over there, just kind of outlining just where I want those front to just kind of hit. So we're gonna see that light's gonna hit, maybe just kind of fade down here a little bit there. And on the side of the um, hair there, we've got it you know, hitting pretty solid. Notice it's starting to show in the cheek a little bit. I'm just gonna paint that in a little more, let it kind of hit that cheek. And it's gonna stop at the nose because that nose is gonna block the light. So we're also gonna see maybe a little bit of uh, down here, I'm just kind of shaping it. And it might just catch a little bit here. I'm not doing that very hard, just kind of soft there. And this side here is gonna be in shadow, so it's not gonna catch the light. Let me drop this down a little bit and maybe a little bit more down here where we are gonna catch that light up there. So what I'm doing is I'm actually defining a little bit of her shape too while we're doing this. So it's actually shaping our subject, maybe a little bit of the hair there might catch a little bit. And generally speaking, that's what we're gonna get there. So the light is just gonna kind of come in here and hit her a little bit, maybe a little bit more over here and a little bit just kind of catching onto that uh, metal on the earrings, probably gonna be reflecting a little bit. So if you feel like you've gone over, you can just go back and you can paint with black. And by painting with black, you're able to hide that. So let's see what we've done. We've essentially just done that. We just painted a little bit in. Now, why didn't I have the light hitting up over here? And that's because we have a spotlight. If I have, if I was working with more of a, um, a wider room light or something like that, or a bigger light source, then I would start to paint some of the light in some of these areas, some of the arm and places like that. But maybe a little touch of that arm might just get a little bit there. So I'm just gently doing that, not too much. Um, in fact, I probably overdid it. So let me go with the black there and I'm just gonna paint some of that back out a little bit. So just want just a little hint of some light catching on there, a little hint of the light catching on the front surface there. So you're imagining as the light is coming down this way, it's hitting and all the areas that are facing that light are gonna get a little bit of illumination, maybe a little bit in here, but not too much because the arm is actually gonna protect some of that and create some shadows. So maybe just a little light's gonna be just touching up there. There we go, so as that spotlight's coming down, it's just hitting all the facing objects. And the backward sides here are gonna be in shadow. So let me make sure that that shadow's strong there in that side of the face. That's good. And maybe just darken that down a little there. There we go. All right, so we've got, you know, somewhat, we've got the light kind of hitting our object. Now what we wanna do is we wanna create a beam of light. So I'm gonna show you a neat way to create a beam of light. I'm just gonna hit the space bar just to pull this down a little bit. And so we're gonna have our beam of light come up around here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new layer. 
And now we're going to grab our marquee tool or our little lasso tool. And the lasso tool we're going to work with here is the polygon lasso tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start actually with where the beam of light is hitting. The top part of the beam is here. And the bottom part is about there. Notice it's kind of spread just a little bit from there, but that's fine. So we're going to decide where is our object. I'd say our light will be up here. So we're just going to make it a little wider. So that's the width of the light. And then we're going to there. So what we've done is essentially this is our light beam is going to come down and hit our object right there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to create that actual light. And the way to do that is to grab the gradient tool. I'm going to choose white for the foreground. And then I'm going to make sure, let's turn that off, that I'm using here the second option, which is foreground to transparent. We're using a linear light and make sure that transparency is turned on, opacity is 100, and mode is normal. So we're just going to start now. We're going to click and drag down to about here. And what we're doing here is we're creating that beam of light. So now I'm going to turn off the selection by just simply clicking on one of these other marquee tools or something and clicking away or hitting Control D or Command D to deselect. All right, so now we've got this kind of beam of light there. We need to soften the edges to make it look a little more realistic. So with that layer selected, we're going to go into the filter. We're going to go to the blur, grab the Gaussian blur. And notice as we add a blur on here, there we go. We start to see this beam of light is now looking much more natural. We're going to click OK. So now you can see we've got this beam of light is coming down and it's hitting our model. So if I turn off the area it's hitting, we would just simply have the beam there. And then turning this on creates these highlight areas. Now there's some interesting things that we can do with this. So say for example, we've got these two layers here where we know we've got our light on here. Let me select those and put them in a group. So I'm just going to hit Control G and I'm going to call this light. And we know that this is our background here. So we can actually go in here into our curve now. And we could play around with our curve and darken off the other areas a little bit more if we wanted to make it more dramatic. We could even go into the colors here. Let's go back into the reds. Maybe reduce the reds a little in the shadows. Let's go under the greens. Reduce those a little bit in the shadows. See how we can just really start to play around with this. And then we'll go back to our blues and maybe bring our blues back. Or you, you can see all the different kind of things we could do just by moving those around, playing around with the color. So we could put the blues more in the shadows if we wanted, or we could put them more in the highlights. So let's just give it a little bit there in the shadows and maybe reduce it down a little in the highlights. There we go. And so you can just kind of see how you can go in there. You can just play around and you can refine this. Um, the other things that we can do here is if we want to go in to the light area, which is what we've done here, is I'm going to create an adjustment layer here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into a hue saturation. And I've applied a hue saturation. And what I can do with this is if I select this option here, it's going to clip it now just to this group. And then if I want to add a little bit of color in here, I can choose colorize. And I could use a different colored light. So let's increase the saturation just like crazy. And let's find a shade of light that we like. So if we're doing a concert or something, we could have a green light. We could have a blue light. You know, we could have a purple light kind of hitting more of a pink light. Pull our saturation down a little bit. We can play around with that. And you can see how we can play around that with the lightness as well. So let me just pull that down. And it's kind of interesting because it's just hitting these areas. But it's a little strong. So there's a couple of things we can do. One is I'm going to change it to color blend mode. And then we don't lose any of the uh, tonality of here or any of the contrast. And now I can take the opacity, pull the opacity all the way down, and just dial it up a little bit. So there we go. Now we're just getting a little bit of that color. And if we don't like that color, which I'm not really that crazy about the pinkish color, it's all right. You know, we could go back, maybe find one of these other colors here, a warmer color, which I think looks kind of cool. And we can apply that there. So that's looking pretty good. Now, one of the things I'm noticing, too, is that our light is getting a little bit of that color, but it needs a little more. So let's select our light layer. And I'm going to add another hue saturation. In fact, I'll just take this hue saturation. I'm going to duplicate it. So what I'm doing is I'm holding down the Alt key or the Option key and dragging it above inside that layer group now. And I want to clip that so it only affects this layer. So I'm going to hit the Alt key or the Option key and click. 
And notice when I do that, now we get this little arrow, which means it's only affecting this now. So it's not affecting the rest of our object. And obviously we need to make some changes to this to make it work better on the white. So I'm gonna double click. And the reason it's not adding that color to the white is because pure white can't get color. So what we need to do is just darken it down just a touch. So we can take it in here. Uh, we can take our lightning down a little bit and let's increase our saturation a little bit. And so what we're doing is we're playing around now inside of our light layer here. And um, so let's just play around some different colors. So one of the things that you may find is um, right now we're not seeing any color and I bet you that's because of the blend mode. Let's go in here. We're gonna change that from a color blend mode to a normal blend mode. And notice now we're starting to see a little bit of that color hit that beam. So let's double click on here again. And now that we've solved that problem, let's, if we take the lightness down, we can add more color. Or take the lightness up, it reduces the amount of color. We can play around with the saturation and of course the opacity in here to determine how much color we want to add. And of course we can change that color of that light by changing the hue, but we're doing kind of a warmer, kind of a yellowish kind of a light there. And of course, if you want it more yellow, you just bring the lightness down more. So this is uh, kind of how you would play around with it a little bit. And I just want to make it a little more subtle. So we're going to go there and uh, essentially that's it. So here we go. We've got the before and then we've done after where we've done is we've just made it kind of more of a night scene for a little bit of light coming down hitting our subject so that's essentially how you're going to do that now i have another written tutorial in photoshopcafe.com i'll put a link to it right here and um and that actually shows a vehicle indoors and you can actually see that that effect actually works really really well um on a, a vehicle an object like that also for background this one here i just want to keep a simple background so you can really see what's happening with the beam of light. So this is a great effect for you to play around with and experiment. And I think you're going to have a lot of fun with it. So don't forget, add a comment here. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you'd like to learn. Um, and like this, share it, uh, share it with your friends. And uh, check in next time for another tutorial from Photoshop Cafe. And also don't forget to subscribe. All right. This is Colin Smith from Photoshop Cafe. I'll see you at the cafe.